Good evening, everyone. And I got to turn this on, don't I, Grant? Excuse me. Now then, good evening, everyone. Good to see you, everyone, out tonight. Folks, for the last several months in our many sermons and our discussion groups, we've been looking at apologetics. And you remember apologetics is uh, being able to defend, being able to prove specific, specifically our faith. Uh, Peter related that we have the responsibility to sanctify God and always be ready to give a defense. That's the word apologetic there, a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. And you remember that our faith is based in evidence. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, faith is the substance of things for. It's the foundation, the confidence of things hoped for and the evidence, the proof of things not seen. So from the logical arguments that we studied a few weeks and months ago to the archeological evidence that we have been more recently noticing, all these evidences support. They support God's existence. They support the Bible as being true. Now, at least in our auditorium class, we've reinforced over and over again that the Bible in and of itself proves itself. There's plenty of evidence, plenty of proof from the Bible itself. But these other evidences, these are supporting evidences of that faith. So I want us to keep that in mind as we look at all these things uh, from week to week. Tonight we're going to notice an archeological find, folks, that is regarded, still haven't got everything turned on up here yet, it is regarded as the greatest archaeological discovery in the 20th century. I don't have it on in the back. Uh, Keith, is that you up there that turned that on? Because I'll need that tonight. So it's the greatest archaeological discovery of the 20th century. And it is the Dead Sea Scrolls, folks. And as we begin, I want us just to recognize some information about these scrolls. They were discovered between 1947 and 1956. Now, I'm, uh, I think I have this later in my notes. There have been more discoveries fairly recently. NBC said uh, just two years ago, some more discoveries, uh, not only of manuscripts, but some other archeological finds have been found in that area. So that's interesting to know. Now, Andrew, has been there, folks. And let's see if I can go back. Nope, that's what I wanted to show. Andrew has been there. And these are his pictures that he gave me. He told me he had to have credit for this tonight. Okay? So Andrew had the opportunity to visit there not too long ago. And in this area, you can see the Dead Sea. And I'll point this out on the overhead. That's right back in this section here. That's the Dead Sea. And... The caves that we're mentioning, you've seen pictures already of those, are these caves here. Now, according to Andrew, if you're looking at the cave section and you literally turn around, that's when you're going to see the Dead Sea, okay? So that's how that works, and I'm seeing uh, folks agreeing with me that, uh, that have been there, so I appreciate that as well. Now, what's also interesting are the, is this particular picture, and this picture is of the community area of the group called the Essenes. The Essenes were a Jewish sect at that time. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But they believed and, and were a group that really wanted to follow the Old Testament. And what you're seeing in this particular, particular picture, if I'm understanding correctly, is one of the bath areas where they would fulfill their rituals, their ritual bathings, their ritual purification processes and so forth. So, so that's interesting. But these ancient manuscripts, folks, they're approximately 2,000 years old. 2,000 years old, uh, dating from the third century BC to the first century AD. Most of these scrolls are written in Hebrew. Some are in uh, a few of them are written in Aramaic, Greek, and, a, and an Aramaic dialect. They're written mainly on parchment and with a few written on pampyrus. Also understand that the vast majority of these scrolls which survived are literally, folks, just pieces. 
They're just fragments and extremely fragile. There are only a handful of these manuscripts that are truly found intact. Yet from these pieces of parchment and pampras, they have gathered in around 950 to, I've seen other numbers say 980 different manuscripts. That's a lot, okay? All these manuscripts discovered, they've been deciphered in some way and have been published. And many of these scrolls are available on the internet that you can see them. I'll have later on the overhead two websites that might be interesting to you if you're into this type of thing. But folks, recognize how fragile these manuscripts are. And due to their fragile state, many of the scrolls have never been unrolled. Because if they unrolled them, they'd just deteriorate. So it's interesting that scientists have developed some high-tech X-ray machines. I think some of them are part of NASA's program. And they've got computers that allow researchers to look through those scrolls and layer them out by the computer, and they're able to read them. And again, they've been published. It's pretty interesting what all the uh, work that has been done into these. Now, these scrolls fall into three, three categories. Three categories. Uh, biblical, apocryphal, and satarian. Now, I want us to talk first about the Satarian scrolls, and we'll get to know the people a little bit better. Satarian scrolls specifically talk about the life. They talk about the customs of the particular Jewish sect called the Essenes. This particular group of, of Jews became a separatist group that flourished in the area around the Dead Sea during the 2nd century B.C. and into the 1st century A.D. They originally due to their disputes over the Jewish law and, the, and questions and so forth about who were going to be the legitimate high priest, all those types of things, they separated themselves from the Jerusalem area. And they saw themselves as a genuine remnant of Israel who were upholding the true covenant of the Old Testament law. They also saw themselves as the direct line of priests. And that's what they practice. Their satirian manuscripts describe the customs, the daily activities, the various laws of their community. They observed a strict hierarchy and emphasized ritual purity. They considered themselves, again, the correct line of Jewish priests, and they practiced the ritual immersions. Uh, they ate together after prayer, devoted themselves to charity, benevolence. They forbade expressions of anger. They studied the books of the elders and were mindful of the names of the angels and kept them in books as well. What happened to them? Folks, well, the common view is the Essenes disappeared after the Jewish-Roman War in A.D. 70, which was when the destruction of the settlement at Qumran took place. Essenes placed these scrolls into these caves, and it's not Qumran, it's Qumran, excuse me. Am I saying it right, Andrew? All right, <laughs> okay, thank you. But they, they were the ones that placed these in those caves. And folks, some scholars suggest that it was possibly what we would consider a library today. Uh, that was their library. Other scholars believe they placed these in, uh, in those caves for protection from the Roman conquest that was about to take place at the end of the first century. So that's a little bit about those satirian uh, uh, category. The biblical manuscripts some, comprise some 200 copies again, of those 950 to 980 scrolls, they are of the ancient Hebrew Bible, which is the Old Testament. There were no copies, quotations, or, <coughs> or even fragments of the New Testament found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's all Old Testament. Possibly because, again, they, they were written and circulated, or the New Testament maybe wasn't written and circulated until after their existence. But remember, too, a lot of these scrolls and, the, and a lot of what the Essenes believed was the Old Testament law. Even if they heard of Christ or, or had scriptures of Christ, they probably would not have paid too much attention to it. <coughs> the Dead Sea Scrolls, folks, do contain 
every book of the Old Testament except for Ezra and Nehemiah. 87 of the scrolls are the Pentateuch, or the first five, book, five books of the Old Testament. That's about 45% of these particular scrolls. 46 of the scrolls were made up of the major and minor pro, uh, major prophets. Ten others took, made up the minor prophets, which are about 25% of the biblical scrolls. The remaining 57 made up the rest of the Old Testament. And many of these, again, did not survive due to decay. And I'll give you an example. First and Second Chronicles, they say the scroll that is left is about the size of your hand. But they know the text from it was from First or Second Chronicles. That gives you a little bit of perspective of the biblical side of things. Now the apocryphal manuscripts. Folks, the apocryphal manuscripts relate to the religious writings that were not part, <coughs> excuse me, not part of the biblical canon. This term is borrowed from the early church fathers who use this term frequently to identify religious books, again, other than the Bible, other than the inspired word. Some of the list of these apocryphal books, the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, uh, Ben Surah, Tobid, the epistle of Jeremiah, the wisdom of Solomon, and uh, again, some of the folks that I was reading and scholars that I was reading about these, the epistle of Jeremiah was not written by the Jeremiah we know. The wisdom of Solomon was not written by the Solomon we think of, but they were again secondary to the Bible. Many question, since these apocryphal manuscripts were found with the biblical manuscripts, then, then the Essenes consider them as a part of the canon, part of Scripture. And this is one of the questions that I hope we'll discuss in our discussion groups later. <clears throat> Yet at this point, let me relate that just because there were extra religious writings among these manuscripts does not indicate that the Essenes accepted them as Bible or accepted them as an inspired Word of God. And again, we'll have discussion about that later. But the Dead Sea Scrolls are important to us as Christians. They're important to us today because they verify the accuracy of the Old Testament law. They, the really old manuscripts, folks, help us to understand that there is no doubt, no doubt of the Bible being transmitted faithfully through the centuries. Peter related that the word that the Lord Peter related that the word of the Lord will last forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, since you've been purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is of grass, and all the glory of man is of the flower of grass. The grass withereth, its flower fa uh, falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. Folks, he's quoting from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Jesus stated that heaven and earth will pass away, but not his words. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, and Luke 21, verse 33. Folks, we know this is a fact. <clears throat> However, the Dead Sea Scrolls help to verify this, help to verify this truth. The oldest biblical manuscript of the Dead Sea Scrolls are by far the oldest copies of the Hebrew Old Testament. The oldest manuscripts of the Hebrew Testament or the Old Testament before the Dead Sea Scrolls were the Masoric, and I'm saying that improperly, the Masoric text. Folks, the Dead Sea Scrolls date back as early as the second, maybe the third century BC, which makes them a thousand years older than the oldest text we had before then, the oldest Hebrew text. That's pretty amazing. And what is interesting is that they go 
together still. In other words, they follow each other. The best preserved, again, is the great Isaiah scroll. This scroll of Isaiah is one of the original seven Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in 1947. It is the largest of all the manuscripts. It measures 734 centimeters long. Now, folks, I had that stepped off up here, but Mark messed me up, okay? But I'm going to show you anyway. I think I know where it still is. Starting somewhere here where there was a blue piece of tape that's now there, down there by Mark, coming all this distance. That's how long that scroll is, 24 feet long, 10 inches, 10 and a half inches tall. And it is one of the best preserved of the scrolls as well. A lot of people say that it is one of the best preserved scrolls. It has 54 columns containing 66 chapters of the Hebrew version of the book of Isaiah. And it dates again to about 125 B.C. It is also, I mentioned, the oldest of those scrolls, some 1,000 years older than the oldest manuscript we had before this one was discovered. To me, that's amazing. If you want some more information about the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I'm... I've been having to turn around lately. But you can take a picture of that. Both these are extremely good websites to go to. <clears throat> the bottom of, those, of that one, the one by Leon Levy, you can see the scroll, the Isaiah scroll. The other one is the museum in Israel. And there it is a, muse, it's a website just full, of, and full and full of information about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Folks, God's word has been faithfully perpetuated for us. We can know for sure, we can be confident, and we can trust that we have God's message. (coughs) So the question for us is what are we going to do with the message? Are we going to accept God's word and follow it faithfully today? Are we going to truly live by its message, allowing it to direct our lives in this world? Or are we going to... Are we going to follow what it teaches concerning what we must do for our eternal life and our salvation? As I said earlier, the Bible offers its own evidence. The Bible offers its own proof that God exists and that His his Word is true. But folks, this is just the whipping on the top. This is that secondary evidence that helps us to know for sure and to give us just more evidence. If you desire to know again more about the Bible, to know more about the Word of God, then we're here to assist you. If you are listening online tonight and would like to know more about what we're talking about, the Bible in and of itself, Christ, there's information at the end of our service that you can find on how to get in contact with us. If you're here tonight <coughs> and want to study the Bible, Please let us know. You can let us know. We'll make arrangements for you. If you have studied God's Word and you know what it teaches about faith, repentance, confession, baptism, and living and committing your life to the Lord, and you just haven't made that step yet, then folks, we would like to help and would be glad to help you tonight to obey God and His Word. Or possibly you're just struggling, struggling to live that life that you've committed to. And you need our prayers. Whatever we can do to help you this evening, we'll be more than glad. And let us know as together we stand and sing.